I don't know if you have seen it. Last week it was, uh, I saw it on CBC. There's, uh, there was a petition signed by 250 Christian congregations from all sorts in Ontario asking Premier Ford to reopen their churches, saying we're more than physical being. We're spiritual being. We're emotional being. We are relational beings. They said they would like to reopen their church 40% of their capacity. They also want to be able to go into the hospital, suit up, mask up, and following all the procedure to visit the sick and pray for them. And when I read that, I remember a conversation I had many years ago with a member of a former congregation. That person came one day and asked me to spend a few minutes with the person mother before each service. Um, and I answered, yes, I can try. But you have to understand that I cannot spend five minutes with everyone, every week, like 100 person, five minutes, there's not enough time. The person answered back, said, oh, I totally understand. I totally understand, Stefan. But my mother is different. It's not the same. Ah. Uh, if we set aside the uh, what I call the false debate, faith versus science, you know, some people say if you pray, you won't be infected, which is totally false. Um, what I'm seeing in, in those arguments is a lack of humility. You know, you have a group of congregation, a group of leaders saying, I am important. I am essential. You know, theaters, playhouses, amusement park, cafe, bars, well, that's a bit trivial. Church, my church, well, it's not the same. It's different. I should be allowed to go into hospital. You know, among overworked nurses and doctors, I should be allowed to use equipment that sometimes we're short of because I am important. During time of crisis, like, like the one we had, this pandemic, uh, we often go back to the question of individual rights versus collective rights. We see people manifesting that they don't want to be confined because their individual rights, they say, are violated. And the ideal work when both individual and collective rights can work together. This is wonderful. But what happened when they are in conflict? Like these days. Back to our Christian leaders who wrote that petition. Who, re who wrote that petition, yeah. Maybe they forgot that Jesus, at least what I'm reading in the Bible, never said... Oh, make sure you eat all your bread before even thinking of sharing. Take care of your family before helping a stranger. Satisfy your desires before considering the welfare of others. Yes, this current situation sucks. Yes, this is the tenth week of confinement and it's difficult and even if we see the first sign of the confinement it's still difficult and yes we would like to see each other we're not even sure we'll see face to face again and yes we would like to go back to our church i agree with all of this but sometimes we need to remember the reason of these sacrifices. Taking care of the most vulnerable in our midst of our society is an important part of the Christian messages. When the prophet says, protect the widow, the orphans, the poor, these were the vulnerable 
of their society. And today, well, maybe it changed a little. But there are people who are more at risk. And we ask, we are asked to a collective effort. We are asked to say, you know, maybe I will do less. But keeping the most vulnerable one safe as much as we can made it worth it. To be, to be Christian, sometimes it means to put some of our desires, some of our wants, some of our sense of importance on the back burner for a while. A sacrifice that is not interesting, that is not sexy, that is not necessarily appealing. But this is the call we're asked something bigger than ourselves, something bigger than my wants and my desire and my sense of importance. A little less of I, a little more of we. Take care of yourself. Use the opportunity to have to maybe go outside. If you have a garden and I think the weather seems to come back to what it's supposed to be normal for this time of the year. Have a garden, take some sun, uh, have some walk. If you have the opportunity to go back to work, good for you. If it's not your reality, don't give up. Don't despair. This will have an end. And regardless of everything that is going on in our lives, personally, collectively, like a colleague remind me this morning, regardless of all of this, we have received the promise that God is with us. We're not alone. Thanks be to God and amen. Bye-bye.